It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckBaits.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckBaits down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckBaits.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will give you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ15 off to save 15% off your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at Packermax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the Packermax. Go on over to Packermax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll give you $25 off your order over at Packermax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ15. J10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, you want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to J. JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water, make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Deer Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to their brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Deer Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? Good evening, everybody. Tonight's live looking into the Sault Ste. Marie. It's a nice, balmy 81 degrees. Welcome to the last day of May. It is the last day of May. Man, tomorrow's June 1st. It is. And we just missed a freighter going through the Sioux Locks. We did. We just missed a freighter going through. Uh, about five minutes ago, it started entering, and it went on by. So It looks nice and warm up there. It does look nice and warm in the UP. Well, welcome to almost June. I tell you what, this year is absolutely flying by. Good week this week? You know what? With Memorial Weekend, it was a busy weekend. It was fast, and here we are. Yeah. You know, it just, I don't know. Exactly right, Mark Coleman. I'll tell you what, it's getting fast. It's getting warm. Today was, I think it was 90 today. It did hit 90 here uh, in the Flint, Michigan area. In mid-Michigan area, it's hot, hotter than blue blazes. I tell you what, it's. Uh, I tell you, last week we were on the river. Nancy and I were doing a little kayaking here locally. How was it? It was beautiful. It was just warm enough to where you could float along, enjoy the day. The blue skies, no wind. Current was smooth. Did 12 miles in four and a half hours. There you go. So it was a good day. It was a real good day. I, I'm, you know, and I went to the rifle range. Yes, you did. That's awesome. It, and it was kind of, you know, I was so busy all weekend. It was like, man, whew, almost wanted to go back to work to rest. No, never. Right, exactly. But I, I tell you, I'll tell you what, Mark Coleman, uh, we switched last week's show with my show and this show because we got to have sponsored by the daily press our monthly visit to the up send us some nice shirts right they sent us some nice shirts uh we're gonna go all the way up back up to the up of michigan 
uh, where we're going to talk to, and we've had, a, uh, Adam has talked about him on the show, Blades Bait and Tackle, but now we're going to have Blade himself and Lacey Bledorn on the show, live with us tonight from the UP. How you doing, guys? Really good. Hey, guys. Good to have you on the we're show. Good. Finally be able to talk to some people we've heard a lot about, especially from Adam Wynn, our guy who runs our fishing page. So, welcome to the show. Shout out to Adam. Thanks, guys, for having us. Yeah, I heard he, he spent a little little money up there and, 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 and been bugging you guys in the shop there. So, we apologize for the bugging part. <laughs> Not a problem. What happens at Blades stays at Blades. I love it. I love it. So that's what we like to hear. Um, I, you know, glad to have you on the show. Uh, as we talk with you, just uh, we're these these monthly interviews with people that are sponsors of the UP Ice Fishing Show coming up in November. So if anybody's going to be in the area of Escanaba. The first weekend in November, you can take a little bit of time out from hunting. That's you can right. go over to the state fairgrounds there and uh, enjoy the show. And you guys will be there as well. That's right. Yeah, we're uh, uh, a major sponsor because it's right in our wheelhouse uh, with ice fishing. That's where we started the bait shop. And uh, now we're evolving into open water, but that's where it all started for us. Excellent. You know, like going back uh, almost 25 years with fam family and friends, was ice fishing uh, like the major in your blood to, to do it, or did you do a lot of fishing and then just honed in on the ice fishing aspect? Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, ice fishing's always been a thing that uh, some friends of ours, uh, I, we've always done, and then when I met Lacey, she really didn't fish. She grew up on a dairy farm in southern Wisconsin, and she took to it pretty good. She outfishes me, and anybody that <laughs> says their wife or woman doesn't, um, they're probably lying. Not going to lie. Uh, we <laughs> had that when we had Sarah on from the Daily Press. She did the same thing. Yeah. So yep. it, it, it's a common uh, thing. Yeah. 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 I put her on those fish. Uh, yep. I don't think that's going to save you at this point. She <laughs> caught it. Make me feel good. It's a team sport. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, it. what made you, after you got into the, the fishing and Lacey, you started getting into it, what made you decide to, to open Blades Baits three years ago or three seasons ago and, and, and hone in on that hard water aspect? So... Uh, early 2020, if we all fondly remember back to that time in our lives, uh, that was when COVID was just hitting us, and uh, Blade and I spent six weeks out on the bay with our two labs that a lot of people uh, checking in tonight know, Cedar and Red, and uh, yeah. yeah. So we'd leave probably once a week uh, to go back home and shower and resupply, but we used one of our drop-down trailers that we outfit people in now, and, um, you know, just kind of test the limits. We had no intentions of doing anything like this in our lives, really, except for sometimes I'd, I'd run all the way south of Escanaba to get bait. Okay. And it was really hard to, um, you know, consistently get live bait in the area because... I, and I found out why after I opened a bait and tackle shop. But at the time, I thought, man, this this uh, this is crazy. We should uh, do this. We're up here fishing anyway. Let's open a shop and sell bait in the winter. And that's all we wanted to do. That if was it. If it were only that easy. <laughs> <laughs> what I found out in uh, uh, to follow up on that is uh, I started with four tanks my first day open. And my second week, I added two more tanks. And this year, we added four more tanks we've got 10 tanks and i found out there's no bait shop around little bait and knock with all of us combined that can handle the masses that can come that's incredible i mean it, you literally landed right into a gold mine oh well, that's tough to say i mean i wouldn't say we there's a demand there and there's a perk but to establish and get to where we're at in three years it's, it's, uh, we're constantly building. People call us the little Cabela's of Kipling, and I take that <laughs> as a compliment. Absolutely. Because we, but no, nothing against Cabela's, but we have more than them when it comes to ice fishing specifically. Right. Now we're doing this open water thing, and I tell people, don't judge us till next year. It's a building, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, is, is the open water, I, I'm, I'm not a fisherman. Uh, like I said before the show, I drown worms, but I, I know enough about it to be dangerous. But looking at, at the ice fishing, the hard water season, soft water season, uh, you started with what, what you knew. Uh, the soft water season, is it as big up there as the uh, hard water season? No, not even close. But the demand for what we're offering, whether it's trolling or, um, you know, we're gonna, by next year we'll be getting more into fly fishing and just keep branching out into what people want, whatever the demand is. You know, when somebody comes in and asks uh, Ella, our full-time, we call her our general manager, uh, Lacey and Ella, they run the inventory in the shop. And when somebody comes in and says, uh, just for example, um, I, I like this beetle spin. Oh, you know, we don't have beetle spins in here. Um, they go order about $800 worth of every beetle spin and every color <laughs> and everything there is. So they're always building. Um, and it's a learning curve for us. We're always really good at the ice fishing thing. We have a lot of confidence there, but this is just a little different. You know, and speaking of like getting started out of COVID, uh, or when that all happened and you spent all the time on the ice, and now you're, you're building your inventory, uh, do, do you have problems getting certain things in at certain times of the year? I know Danny and I used to do a little work with Cabela's. They would order all their ice fishing gear early in the season because they had to come on a long boat from another country usually get into america get there and once it was gone people would just eat it up real quick and they really couldn't resupply but with the do you have uh, the sources where you can keep keep a constant flow of good goods coming in so that's what makes us different yeah. is exactly right we all kind of have to uh, order our shows and things in the in the fall mm -hmm. um cabela's i'm sure too does the same kind of ordering that way i'm sure but at least us littler shops i'll order in the fall and then uh we can once we're out reorder but the bigger box stores don't do any reordering once they're out they're getting ready for spring right, or right. the next season so where we can kind of keep focusing right up until the end of season uh they don't have that luxury that's yeah. awesome plus you've got local suppliers there like uh, beaver lures as well right yep moonshine lures and all kinds of local uh lure makers and rod makers and all kinds Literally of people. dozens of local rod and lure makers that uh may not be heard of outside the up um but and then there's the the moonshine and beaver she's taken off um caitlin's got a great story of something that came out of a pandemic you know, right a bored teenager or junior in high school that started making lures it's, uh, we had her on the show a month ago? Yep, a month ago. And you know what? Uh, we're going to talk to a few of those other ones that you mentioned as well as we march on to November. And, you know, that is just a great... Um, when we see the poster of the show that's upcoming and we see all the different sponsors that are all involved, it is so good to see everybody working together to bring the largest UP ice fishing and hunting show right there in Escanaba to the state fairgrounds. You know, it's we talked to... Uh, in the beginning to start this off we talked about this is the second year and hopefully they're going to be bigger and better and as, as we get there and we're helping them get there so you know what with that being said how about we take a break and when we come back we're going to talk a little bit more about the store all right we're going to step outside real quick we'll take our first break we'll be right back after this mark coleman you're reading my mind all right just kind of looking through the questions here real quick uh, Adam Wynn says he's sorry that he was late to the show, but he was on the lake smacking fish. So, uh, <laughs> we'll, Adam. we'll we will allow that, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. You know where you want to take off? Yep. Okay. All right. Here we go. Stand by. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. We're still sitting here talking with Blade and Lacey from blades bait and tackle all the way up from michigan's glorious upper peninsula absolutely and if you go to their website bladesbait.com you go to the live well section they've got pictures of 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 people that have caught fish and lo and behold guess who i found on their web page that's right <laughs> our one and only adam smiling away uh, you know as we talked about in the the break where adam was but we're not going to tell you where Adam is or was. Adam you, won't tell us. Right? But you, if you want to know what goes on during the breaks, you got to, if you're listening to the auto, audio portion, you got to come back to Facebook Live or wait a few days when it shows up on YouTube so you can see what we talked about in the break. 
There you go. So, but anyways, go over to, to bladesbait.com or visit uh, Blades Bait and Tackle on Facebook and give them a like and a share as well. But going back up to the UP, talking with Blade and Lacey. Um, so, we're going, <laughs> it's 80-something up there. We're heading into to the soft water season. This is your first year tackling it. How's your expectations looking for the summer outlook? We have no expectations. So that's been a really good thing and a mindset for us. Um, a lot of people have warned us it's slow. Uh, we've tried to carve out um, some things with some old town kayaks that people can't find locally. Uh, you know, it's something that you would typically order well in advance to get in your hands. And we're giving people the opportunity to schedule a time and take an old town paddle. Uh, pedal kayak or an electric one and try it out before they buy it that's a great idea having something there that you can actually get out of the water do you do you offer uh any rentals for fishing are they set up for fishing yeah thanks for asking we're going to have uh things all laid out by mid-june here and uh we're going to have it so you can stop by the shop grab a kayak take it with you camping or wherever you want to go and bring it back uh, or within a uh, certain, probably a limited radius, we'll actually deliver it. That's a great idea. I know uh, kayak fishing here in the last four or five years is really starting to boom. Matter of fact, Adam does it here locally a lot of times as well. So uh, that's something that has intrigued me. I've not actually, I actually looked at them back, I don't know, three, four years ago. Uh, just haven't uh, made that purchase. But that's a great well, opportunity that you got there where people can actually try them out. Yeah, take a ride over the bridge, and we'll send you one back across the bay and over to back to you. You won't make me paddle back across? <laughs> no, we don't. We'll Auto send you pilot. an autopilot. We'll send you with a couple Dakota lithiums. You'll be great. Yeah. See, there you go. Autopilot. Okay, so you got to explain, like I said, I'm not that big into fishing. Autopilot on a kayak. How does that work? Yeah, so you just add your electronics that uh, maybe you use either on the ice or um, in your boat, your bigger boat, and you can just uh, wire that right in on your kayak and uh, program what you want to do, whether you want to spot lock and stay in one spot or you want to follow a reef, take the contour 200 feet away from a shoreline all the way around a body of water, you just fish. So it with electric motor... It's obviously programmed with that, and, and that uses GPS coordinates of where you're at and takes you where you need to go as fast or as yep. slow as you want to go. Yeah, it's got lake maps, and it just follows where you want it to go, where you program it, and tell it to, to go. And uh, like I said, you, you, and they're so stealthy. Um, I'm a 14-foot aluminum boat guy, and when you go to a kayak with a motor, they're a 45-pound thrust um, in Kota motor, and... Uh, you, you just have such control on being quiet. Mm -hmm. And then to take it a step up, go to a pedal one. Now you're really stealthy, and you can really control your vibrations in the water and get closer to fish than you ever thought. And those are stable enough. I mean, I've, I should say, I've never been on one in the water. But to me, from the way that they look like how they're built, that you could actually, it's got a casting deck where you can stand up fish, be very stable without capsizing. Absolutely. There's some great uh, videos out there on uh, Old Town Fishing's uh, Facebook and website and stuff, too, showing guys standing and casting and, yeah, the comfort of that and the stability of that, for sure. I didn't see it, but I heard a guy was pulling a planer board the other day behind, behind his out on the bay. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> I, you know what? If there's a will, there's a way. So, Lacey, what's your, right. what, do you like kayak fishing or are or, you? Or, or, how, what do you, what's your favorite mode of fishing? Oh, anywhere he is. But I mean, we're both. I mean, we we have small boats right now, two 14 foot boats where we fish. But we love fishing in kayaks. We have a river behind our place uh, that we visit in Wisconsin, and uh, water capabilities all around us. So yeah, we we thoroughly enjoy a good kayak. For I sure. could see it replacing my 14 foot aluminum boat. Absolutely. Really, I mean, and a lot of guys say, you know, I fish alone anyway, uh, or you know, if you have two of them and the remote lakes you can go to with uh, two guys hauling a kayak versus uh, uh, aluminum boat is amazing. And we joke around the shop with all the 
uh, electrified uh, cars and everything. We might not have gas, and we're going to be all in kayaks. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right? Uh, and, and, and tell you the truth, up in the UP, there's a lot of hidden lakes that you can kind of sneak into and catch some wonderful fish in the in the backwaters there. Yeah. That's exactly why we have the pedal ones. It's for the non-motorized lakes. Yeah, we have backpack, like, coolers and backpack tackle boxes and stuff like that for all the remote uh, fishing as well. So I would call them uh, high-end uh, coolers like uh, their angles. Yep. Everybody's familiar with your angle minnow buckets and, mm -hmm. and your angle Live coolers. Bait. Yep. These are all the Yeti version that angle has, and uh, they're incredible coolers. and. Uh, we got some deals when we package things together with our kayaks. I mean, they're not inexpensive watercraft. They're, right. You know, they're really quality uh, uh, machines. And so we fishing vessels, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we package some things together because you're going to need paddles, you're going to need life vests, and you're going to want an angle cooler. There you go. You got it. You got to take beverages and food with you. Absolutely. Okay. And, yeah. You know, um, when we, when they, when they, What's your hours of operation up there? Are you open early in the morning, or how do we get to you when you're open? 6 a.m. till 7 at night daily, and Sundays, 6 a.m. to 2. Okay. There you go. That's why, you know, have a little Sunday for yourself. All right, so if I'm, if I'm coming into town, I'm coming from downstate, cross the bridge, turn left, head out U.S. 2, Exactly where would somebody find you all at? Where's the store location? What's the landmarks nearby where people are going to be able to find you? Yeah, so you're going to come into Rapid River mm -hmm. on that US 2. And instead of staying on the freeway all the way into past Gladstone and into Escanaba, at Rapid River at the FS gas station, you're just going to take a, uh, a left. Okay. And that's going to be uh, Bayshore Drive. And you're going to head right down that, and uh, you'll run into us on the right about mm, six miles down. Okay, so we're, we're hugging the coast. You're yep. hugging the coast, right? You're getting off the freeway and uh, running along the lake. Okay. Yep, you, you go right there. You just follow along uh, Bayshore Drive, and right there on, depending on if you're coming, you'll be either right or left. Uh, they're yep. right there in, in Kipling, right by the uh, bed and breakfast of the Rod and Reel Resort. You know, there's a couple places to stay and whatnot. We got the map up thanks to Google. Uh, but, yeah. There's Watch out for deer. Does it say that? <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of deer in Kipling. <laughs> right? So, yeah, you know, it's easy on, easy off, good access to get to you, and you're really close to the water. You know, it's you like you, like we kind of said earlier, you, you're kind of landing into the perfect spot, and there's nobody else up there. Right. Yeah, you get everything you need. Okay, so I'm coming into town. I find out where you're at. Again. I want to get a, a kayak or let's say it's in the winter and, and I'm going to get a, a, a shanty and what have you and all my bait and everything. Once we get there into town, um, you know, maybe I'm looking for some help, maybe finding a place to stay. Do you guys work with uh, some of the locals there and help each other out with different uh, provisions that people might need? Absolutely. You're probably not going to roll right into town uh, and get a great accommodation on the bay. You're probably going to be in a motel somewhere between Gladstone and Escanaba, which are fine, great accommodations. But if you plan ahead a little bit and uh, get in with one of the resorts, one of the links on our website, um, man, they're great accommodations. And um, you come into the check-in, go come to the shop. We'll sit there with a map. We'll show you what's going on with ice conditions, make sure you're safe. That's our number one goal uh, is to try and put out a report, and when people come in, know what's going on so nobody gets into trouble. That's one thing that we noticed through the winter. Uh, we were looking at, at the page is you give uh, updated ice reports, which to me, that's invaluable for, for people coming up, uh, whether they should even come up because maybe the ice conditions are so poor that you can't get out. Yep. So we knew right away going in that it was something we were going to do. We had come from afar to fish the knot before, mm -hmm. uh, before we owned Blaze Bait and Tackle. So, uh, yeah, we just knew that it was something that was important. It's also uh, important for, like, what you're going to travel with, whether you're going to trail or something or whether mm -hmm. you're going to be walking out or whether you're going to be snowboarding. Whether you're going to be snowboarding. Whether you're going to be snowboarding. Yeah. So all those things, yep, he tries to touch on all those things and keep you up to date on what the weather, because we know the knot can be kind of brutal that way, so uh, what the weather's going to be too, so you can kind of prepare for everything. 
And it just, you know, we're looking at the, the we're going to look at the website here. I've got a couple pictures up that you have on the website. And if you've forgotten anything or you need to buy something, you're a one-stop shopping, whether it be from the bait or if, if you forgot your fishing outfit, you've got it right there in the shop for you. That's right. Yeah, no, we have everything from Garmin Live Scopes, uh, Lowrance, um, Hummingbird, things that you typically won't find that way that I anglers enjoy um i always say the first time you come in the shop it's probably an hour hour and a half venture <laughs> looking around well you got to walk around and look at everything right exactly right? and you've got you know you've got listed here on the website you've got clam otter berkeley eskimo vexlar you know beaver lures we talked about them bait and knock lures you know hummingbird you know, it's not going to be a run in and run out, obviously, because you're going to be looking around the, the shop and you're going to be, you know, one thing fishermen like to do is they like to tinker. So if they see something mm -hmm. odd or unique, they're going to want to buy yeah. it and try it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. And also, I'm a sucker for every ice fishing gadget there is, and so we have it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have one of everything, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> But I also heard that we need, if we're up there, we got to bring snacks for red and cedar. You, oh, you got, got to take care. Of, got to take care of the the local celebrities in the area. Is that right? <laughs> take care of red and cedar. They will not turn down trees. So. <laughs> Danny doesn't either. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either, Danny. I don't either. <laughs> food. Uh, nobody turns down good food. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, they are the stars of Blades Bait and Tackle, that's for sure. You guys getting a shout out from Cody Cass. He says you guys are killing it up there. Thanks, Thanks Cody. Cody. And, and you guys really are. You, you, you know, um, from what we've heard, in, in this becoming your first full fledged season, uh, getting into the soft water, it sounds like you guys are on a good track. Uh, even though, you know, like we all talked about that a few years ago, the COVID, when everybody got to doing something else. Uh, but uh, uh, one question we do have, I, I've come up to the UP, but I forgot my license. Do you sell licenses in your store? That's a great question. What a great question. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> At first, we didn't mind because it takes a lot of time. Uh, but now, you know, we're gotten, we've gotten better. We would love to. But the state of Michigan, I think they're getting rid of the licenses. We're on a list of 128 vendors that have to give up their machine before we get one. So we order ORV stickers and we offer them over the counter because uh, we don't have a machine. And then we coach people, uh, whether it's on their cell phone right there or tell them to go to our website, hit the DNR link and grab your license. You know, and it's really, I think that's the direction the DNR is going, like you said, yeah. is uh, they're, they're pushing everybody to, to their phones. And they really do, Danny and I, we talked about this a lot with their new app this year. They're making things pretty simple. It, yeah, it is. As long as you have cell phone service. There you go. That's, <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. And I know yeah. in the UP, they can get a little sketchy at best at, at sometimes, depending on what hill I'm on. Uh, but, yeah. So, but you know what? It's, like you said, stop in, talk to you guys. You'll coach them through it. We'll, we'll get you your license or your ORB sticker, and we'll get you out on the water in, in the, up there in the, the UP. And be legal. And if you don't have uh, that kind of access to your phone or whatever, uh, there's a couple places really close by. The gas station, the Rapid River gas station that we told you to turn on before mm -hmm. you get on <laughs> the Bayshore. They, they sell that live there. So. All right. I tell you what, we're getting real close here to our second break. Let's go ahead and take our second break. We come back. I got something I kind of want to lead in with. Yep. I, and I've got a couple of questions uh, talking about what their expertise is at. All right. We're going to step outside and we'll be right back after this. All right, keep those questions coming in. I see, oh yeah, I knew that question was gonna coming. Uh, okay, you ready? You got anything? You uh, remember, yeah. remember the pictures we, we looked at before, before the show that special. Oh, the the lure. Have that ready. That's where I want to lead in with. Okay. Okay. Let me just do this. Okay. Y'all set? Yep. Okay. Thanks. All right, here we go. Stand by. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Right before we went to break, Rapid River Knife Works was mentioned. Y'all have something a little special that you were working with them on, and we happen to have a picture of it here. Can you explain a little bit about that? 
So we didn't really know that we were working on it with him at the time. But uh, the guys were coming over and grabbing some little forage minnows from the shop. And uh, they threw them in some knives over there at their shop at Rapid River Knife Works. Really, really at two, which they don't know about yet, but they're going to be doing. But um, yeah, got to check those out if you have the time. They're incredible. The, we got a picture of them up right now. It's uh, yeah. That's Danny. You said those are numbered. Yeah, I see. It. I see. Uh, it's Rapid River Knife Works, and uh, it's got the lures uh, that they picked up from you guys in the handle. And yep. it, what they have here is one of five and two of five. So I, I'm assuming this run here is a lot of five. That's what it looks like. Yep. And that looks like a, that's a, a locking blade knife there. So it's a folding knife. Yep. It's uh, a pocket knife is yeah. what, what they're calling it. And, uh, you know, if you're interest, interested, uh, get up over to Rapid River Knife Works. Check out the, the Lure Incorporated Knife. You know, and very cool knife for sure. That that just shows me or tells me a small community, um, things that are, are made locally. Y'all all kind of work together. You talked about, you know, helping out with uh, some accommodations, having them on your website. It's just small communities work together, and to me, that that speaks volume of the area number one, but the cooperation and bringing people up to visit the area. Yeah, no, absolutely, we agree. And we've said it before, uh, we have people that uh, help us out with, uh, you know, uh, taking the tractor and bringing deliveries in if Blade stepped away from the shop to go help out and do some outfitting or uh, people that are helping us uh, house inventory in their garages because we ran out of space or, uh, you know, we'll uh, call late at, later in the evening uh, and have the bar make us up some food that's right down the way uh to take out to our guests out on the water so uh or on the ice uh so yeah no it's a really great small town uh kipling itself north of gladstone there uh we're super fortunate blade has access to the bay and a bunch of different places uh from a bunch of different neighbors that let him uh, take his trailers right out from their their homes and their resorts uh so we're really really fortunate and super grateful that is awesome. Everybody working together. Make it happen. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And you know what? Okay. We made it into the third segment of the show. And I, we're, we're going to have to have, answer the, ask the question. So, how did you end up with the name Blade? Well, I didn't want to correct you at the intro, but you pronounced our last name wrong. I knew you and, would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, the way you botched it, Bladorn or Blodorn was typically how a substitute teacher would do it, and then a classmate would say, no, Blade, Blade door, and the OE is said A. And so that's how I got the name Blade. It's never been because of knives or anything like that. Um, but I have been to a class reunion uh, that a couple of classmates kind of wanted to take credit and maybe even a royalty. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, now they're looking, now they're looking they're for looking, some money. Yeah, they want to cut right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, honestly, when I ask you, I, I did not pronounce it right out either. So, um, you know, it, I can't blame Danny as well. So, you're gonna blame me anyway. Yeah, both both of us did. So, but uh, no, I, I, that's a great nickname, and, and you incorporated it into the business. It just, you know, it, it, it kind of makes sense. You know, fishing. I mean, we they're little they're blades that are on the with a hook on the end. I mean, it goes hand in hand. I think. Hey. It's catchy. It, it works. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there you go, Mark. You were asking about it. So um, there you go. That's how he got his name. He actually he asked another question. Uh, talking about the business side of things, with uh, obviously this is going to be your first soft water season, but during the ice season, the hard water season, uh, is most of your customers repeat customers? Or are you seeing a steady growth? More people come, new people coming in. How's that working? A little bit of both, I would say. So we have obviously our locals that come in every day supporting us, whether it's uh, get, just getting regular everyday supplies or bait as they head out. But um, like, for example, last year, uh, people were either heading to us up at Little Bay to Knock or they were heading to Canada pretty much to get ice. So uh, we, were, we were fortunate, again, that we had ice and really great ice mm -hmm. uh, most of the year, Escanaba and North. Uh, so we had people from all over, literally from South Carolina to out west. Um, and, uh, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed, I mean, 
I, I really don't know that fishery. I mean, we're used to Saginaw Bay for walleye season here, uh, whether it be hard, soft water. But, I mean, I've heard fabulous things uh, about Little Bay tonight. We heard from the, the Yamaha fisherman from the walleye tour. Joe kind of good. Yeah. cut his teeth on the, the bay up there, learning how to fish and guide up there. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about it. But uh, from all the way out west in South Carolina, I mean, that that's cool, having people come that yeah. far. Yeah. You know, it's really fun to outfit people that come from a southern place for some reason. We get a bigger kick out of that. You know, a quick story. Danny and I, we were up on Houghton Lake, and this was years ago, like right after Danny and I first met. And uh, we belonged to this outdoor group online, and we brought some guys up from, from Kentucky and Alabama. And there was a pressure crack, and you could look down into it, you know, but we were sitting on 22 inches of ice. They did not want to step across the crack, afraid that they were going to get separated, fall in, whatever. And then when we built a fire on the ice, they lost their minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they thought, yeah, they we thought we some friends. <laughs> yeah, we have some friends in Florida that just cannot fathom it. Like, they are just like, I don't care if it's big enough for a semi, I'm not getting on that ice. Yeah, right. So, yeah. It, 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 you yeah. know, and at the time, uh, there was a plane that landed on the lake, and there was a car going across the lake. It was, it was. Yep. And watching these yep. guys try to manage the ice was was, was priceless. <laughs> not gonna lie. Yes. Uh, Joe Joe Krugler says you guys are looking good. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. Say hi to Jan. There you go. Um, I'm not gonna repeat the question from Mark. I'll let you do that. Yeah, I know you're gonna let me do that. One. Thanks. <laughs> you know, speak, so we'll get there. I'm going to save that for later, Mark. Thank you very much. You know, speaking of uh, looking at your website, uh, as we as we go through the, the soft water, as we get into hard water season, how early should we, if we want to rent one of your uh, uh, all-season sports trailer to be on the ice, how early should we contact you to get a date set for the upcoming uh, winter time up there? Yeah, so because we're trying to promote the expo, um, we're not taking any reservations until after that show. That gives you the first opportunity to come see us in person at the expo in Escanaba and uh, sign up and, and get your reserve spot. Otherwise, the phones and the emails are open after uh, the first weekend of November in that show, and we'll start taking reservations. And we fill up pretty quick. We're not a big operation. We don't have 20 wagons out there. We've got three. we've got three, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, we we keep it. Uh, we like to say it's a high end operation. Not a lot of uh, fitters can boast having flush toilets on the ice. But I say intimate, but that's kind of weird to some people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we like to be able to take care of everybody individually and not leave people out there hanging and just drop them and leave them for the weekend. It's nice to be able to get to know everybody, and we have repeat customers obviously doing that. And We did it to give people the experience we've had the last yeah. 10 years, and yeah. that's really the only reason we do it. And uh, it's uh, just a fun facet of uh, our hard water adventure system, whether it's the bait shop or outfitting or giving a report or having a real craft that goes on thin ice or suburban on tracks. It's what we need to get the job done and um yeah it's it's just kind of it's a fun it's a fun adventure you know and, and, and to back that up cassie sunstrom says such a great friendly environment love bringing my kids in there they even showed them the fish in the back so that just goes no. to, you know uh the the atmosphere that you have when you walk in the front door there um is family and friendly and, and you know they're going to take the time with you. And on the ice, it's that personal touch that, that keeps people coming back, too, you know, that personal service. So That's easy. super cool of you to say. We've had people tell us that that they used to go to bait shops with either their, their grandparents or their, their dad or their uncle, and they, they remember it vividly, like Fine it was memories. yesterday. Fun, yeah, fine memories. And uh, have had people tell us that that's now their memory for their kids, and we absolutely appreciate that. We also have a worker right down the road. He's uh, 10 now, going to be 10. Yep. Uh, but we have him in the bag for like 14, 15 to sling minnows. So what a great life. enjoyment. I mean, to grow up and be able to work, say that you've worked in a bait shop and to help uh, grow a business like this, that, that to me uh, speaks volumes as well. It's just giving people 
and kids that that outdoors experience you know and that's the thing like Danny and we've always talked about you know things that we had when we were growing up or the things we experienced and you always want to share that with your kids so we can pass those traditions along and that sounds like that's what y'all are doing as well yeah that's sure. important to us. We joke all the time that we probably train two kids out on the bay on five-gallon <laughs> tails. One, <laughs> one's in Chicago and one's in Manhattan right now, but I think they'll work their way back. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, exactly. You know, speaking of, the, we, we were talking about uh, a couple of comments about stopping in your store and, and coming up there from all over around the country. Uh, what would you say is the number one souvenir people buy from your store or something they remember their trip to your store so i'd say apparel probably is our our... and really i mean we're not marketing geniuses but we did put a little thought into this and i thought you know if you put the great lakes on there and you put kipling michigan people are attracted to that and they're attracted to the words little beta knock those are cool and then i throw my name on there and and it's just kind of a nice thing uh, we have a lot of retirees that uh, are snowbirds. They love our uh, memorabilia here because they go to Arizona, Florida, Texas, and they say, I live right here where yep. the Red Star is on, yep. on the Great Lakes. And we so- also have cribbage boards. Anybody in the winter camping, ice fishing community know that cribbage boards are super important. So we have cribbage boards with our logo you on them. You can catch trophy walleyes without burning a little time with cribbage. That's right. That's right. So... All kinds of memorabilia. Gotta have the traditions, you know? right? You got, you know, right. you, you know, you 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 gotta you gotta have that tradition whether you're on the hard water or the soft water. And like you said, anything that has Michigan on it, it's awesome because you can always show them where you're from, right? No yeah. matter yeah. Where, right. where you're going, right? Yeah. That's right. First time I pointed my hand like that down south, said I live right here. Yeah. It, it, like another thing down south that people are like, what? And I go, Michigan. See it? Right here's the state, the mitten. I live right there. Right. We also wanted it to seem close. So even if you yeah. if you live down here in Ohio, Ohio. It looks it like it's Oh, no, no, no. Leave them people in Ohio, man. Leave them well, down there. No, and if you're down here in Michigan <laughs> at the border. There you go. Yeah. Right, right, down right. by Three oh, Rivers. Okay. Close. Yeah. Okay, you know, Dwajiak down that yeah, area. Yeah, Dwajiak, right? Or Erie, you know, and on the other now side. Now that we've alienated the whole Ohio. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> actually, no, because we see a lot of, when when, we're, when I'm heading to the UP, whether it be October, November, or any time. A lot of Ohio here, tags. A lot of Ohio tags are all heading north because, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it's so simple to get to the bridge and get over the bridge, and, and you literally it, it is a wonderful experience of, it's amazing to hear the amount of people down here that have never been across the bridge. I run into that all the time. That blows my mind. Right? You know, it's well, it's worth the drive up and over to come and see us. It is worth the drive just to go be called a troll. Not going to lie. It's, it's always fun. To it's an endearing <laughs> term, i got to tell you. And it's something that we weren't accustomed to because we were just people going there to fish. <laughs> but once we got up there and had this uh, bait and tackle shop, we started to kind of learn now we can actually identify when they're coming up from Wisconsin or over there. We'll tell them right away, you guys are trolls. And they go, you doggone right we are. <laughs> you know, and so it's an endearing term. Another thing about it, you know, like you said, a lot of people haven't been over the bridge. Um, when, when our guests come from uh, that side of Michigan, the Lower Peninsula, it's the cherished backyard. It's a special little place, and it's really a cool thing. And everybody from Wisconsin, we, they all wish it was theirs. Right, exactly. Right. And if Mike goes, if Mike goes to the, my pictures on the website, we actually have a picture. Uh, it looks like a, a wool hat, a few decks of cards, and a cribbage board that's in the form of the state of Michigan. It looks like. Um, so, and then obviously you've got you've got great area. The the store inside, you you can got some ice shanties set up inside. You don't have to go outside and freeze looking at them or anything like that. You know, it, it again. You gotta well, stop. we got them out there, too. Yep, if you want that experience. <laughs> if you want that experience, you go out there, but You got to test drive right. it. You got to get the That's full right. effect. You got to go out there and, right. you know, get your little heater in there and see how warm it keeps you, you know. Right, right. exactly. So, you know what? Uh, is there anything we can expect with, with you guys up at the show? Are you going to bring a lot of your stuff from the store to the show? Yeah, I, you know, we're going to try and get as much new 
inventory there, you know, so people can check out the new stuff. That's our, the other thing is there's a lot of other booths. We'll find out what's signed up, and we're not going to duplicate what other booths are bringing. But we're going to bring some special things uh, that are related to blades, the bay, and we'll probably have a little corner of uh, hot deals, you know, inventory from last year that people can really score some value with. And that's one thing nice about, you know, basically you're the only show in the UP. I know a lot of people are going to complain that it's the first week in November, but it's a ice fishing and hunting show. So, yep. yeah. you, you know, yes. you got to get there to, to see it and enjoy it. And I can't wait to come up there and meet you guys, well, hopefully before that weekend, but uh, definitely look forward to the weekend spending time with you guys amongst I all the it. other yeah. All the other uh, people that are going to be there, whether they're were selling something or they've got food or, you know, it, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a, a, a quick weekend, I bet, uh, of having some fun. So, you know, that's, of course, the first weekend in November. And I tell you what, we're going to head into our last segment. we got a couple of questions that have stacked up that are kind of fit into that last segment. And when we come back, we're going to ask them. All right. Step outside, take our last break. We'll be right back after this. All right, get those last questions in. We're getting into the last segment, and we got a couple questions, and we got our questions. So. Okay. You know what you're going to lead off with? Yep. Okay. All right, here we go. Stand by. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Get into the good stuff here right, we have we a little fun here at the end got a couple more questions you want to ask so go well, ahead the one the one one question is like we're getting into the first time you've been open all year this year uh what would be your best business tip uh that you you would give somebody um about doing this about going from all hard water seasons to opening full time to what would be your best business tip Hmm. Oof. That's that's a really tough one. Maybe hours, I guess. Maybe like uh, being available in hours. So we have people that call us. Like our first season, we were open after hours. Our first season, we were also open from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. And it was seven days a week. We did five in the morning till 10 at night our first year. And then our uh, point of sale system told us the next year when to be open. Right. There so you know. I would say being available. What, would be. what, what sucked about that is it said you got to be open at 5 a.m. every morning. You know, so we burnt the candle real hard, and what we discovered is we had to find quality people. And so yep. we have what's called a general manager. Her name is Ella Benoit, and uh, she's uh, she landed in our lap, and uh, we. Uh, uh, we secured a really good employee that's into fishing, and she's into detail. And her and Lacey, uh, they run the, the shop, really, the inventory and all the lures. It's amazing what a task that is. Um, and then uh, we have a, a high school uh, young man. He's a junior, Michael Steer. Uh, he's winding line. He's uh, doing everything and anything I need him to do. And not only that, he's on the fishing team, and he outfishes anybody I know. He's we, we actually we gave him a title. It's a CFS, Chief Fish Slammer. <laughs> and uh, he, honestly, no, a lot of my reports, uh, you know, fishermen are uh, typically liars and complainers. So <laughs> when I uh, get information from Michael, I know it's solid. And people oh, are buying that oh, they're not fighting. How'd you do, Michael? I limited that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know so. You know, uh, speaking of that, uh, do you have any cookbooks that you sell with local recipes or anything like that out of the store? No, but that is a great, great. idea. Mark that down. Write that down. Thank down. you. I'm going to write it down. We'll take it. When, when you all first started and you're with the idea and you're looking at doing this, did you, with the place that you're at, is was that an established shop? Prior that you yeah, got so that's a hundred-year-old shop there, okay. and uh, the, it was Strands originally, and then multiple owners as a convenience store and a gas station, and you know making pasties and selling beer and booze and minnows and everything. And we looked at that and we thought, oh man, that's a nightmare. Yep. And so we removed gas tanks and walk-in coolers and everything, and uh, just retooled the whole place. And, and we're actually building a 
an 80 by 30 closet next door now uh, to expand. Okay. And so uh, if nothing else, to house inventory back and forth winter and summer. But it was previously the Kipling Quick Mart. Kipling okay. Quick Mart, yeah. Yep. So with that expansion, will that make you the biggest fishing bait store in the UP? I don't know. Not sure about the biggest, but definitely the best. Yeah, yeah. I go the best. You know, there you go. so far, you know, <laughs> from what we've heard, family, family, fun, friendly, everything that needs to go into a, a private store, not a big box store. You know, you, you take the time to stop by. You take the time with the customer, whether it be five in the morning or five minutes to seven at night, right? To that. Absolutely. I'd say, you know, over the years, um, you know, we're not perfect either. We run long hours. I'm sure we've been short a few times. <laughs> not everybody can say we're always that friendly. I can reflect on a few bad times, actually, where it's, you know, long days and it's really demanding. And so, um, but yeah, we, tr we try and uh, keep that vibe up. We like to have music playing in the shop. A lot of people ask if we have bait because it doesn't smell in there. People will say they talk to us on the phone, and I'll say, "Was I nice on the phone?" <laughs> so you were very nice when I when I made contact with you Friday. You were very nice on well, the phone, and I can you. And literally you had to tell me, "Hold on, I got to turn down the music." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. I was getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's interesting. We go to bait shops all the way from here to Florida because uh, we frequent down there, and we got a bad fishing habit on the Gulf, but. We do not find bait and tackle shops like us. I think one of the detriments of our name is that we're called Blades Bait and Tackle. It doesn't really say what we all do. It really sounds simple compared to it. And, um, you know, hats off to all the bait and tackle shops that are usually just selling minnows and they got some hooks in your terminal tackle. And those are what keep all of us going. It's, yep. You're not going to put a Blades Bait and Tackle everywhere, I can tell you that. Yep. Well, it takes the owners to make the shop. Absolutely. You know, and Thanks, guys. You, you know, and one of the things we're going to find out when we meet you guys up there the first week in November, uh, we're going to go live a couple times. We'll definitely have you on. But, you know, it's, can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to see Blades and where you go from here with your expansion and, and everything that you're going to endure in your first full season of being open through hard water and soft water seasons. We appreciate it. You ain't seen nothing yet. We'll see those trolls coming before they even get to Big Bay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, be ri we'll be riding in uh, on our in our trucks. But uh, well, you know what? It, it's been good having you on the show. But don't worry, we've got some questions now for you that we like to have a little fun with our our new interviewees. Uh, and you know, sounds like you guys do some traveling, Florida. Uh, uh, we know you go over to that <clears throat> that other state that's a little mm -hmm. cheesy about mm -hmm. it. But, Smelly cheese one, yeah. Right, right, right. But the question is, so you're driving to Florida or, or you're driving over to Wisconsin. Um, what are you guys listening to on the radio? Uh, outlaw Country, probably. Okay. But we are very versed. If you were in the shop, you can hear anything from Frank Sinatra to Metallica within 10 minutes. Maybe a little Super Tramp. Ah, okay. I like it. <laughs> we, just, uh, we did just add Super Tramp to the playlist. It's funny. Who, who controls the radio? We all have an app to turn it off because you never know if Jelly Roll is going to come on. It's <laughs> a lot of swear when Jelly Roll comes on, and you might have someone young in the shop. Yeah, I'm going to scream all the mute button. Yep. <laughs> I know, Jelly Roll, right? Okay, okay so if you're, if you're traveling, though, and you're traveling down the road, who controls it then? Is it the driver, the passenger? Oh, us. Yeah. Uh, probably me. Yeah. He's driving. Yeah. No, okay. I let her handle that. And I do have a button on the wheel. So if I start that's clicking true. or flicking it, that means she wasn't paying attention. <laughs> to move on. Right. That's right. Uh, okay. So you guys are traveling. You're jamming to outlaw country. Um, you got to have a go-to snack sitting there between you guys. What, what's the go-to snack that each of you are going to have? Tractor supply licorice. Yeah. <laughs> ah, red or black? Red. There we go. All right. I was looking at that the other day. I was down. Really? Uh, yeah, I've got, one, I've got one about a quarter mile from the house, and I was standing in line. Like, that licorice looks pretty good. 
I mean, Eddie Long gets some blades bait and tackle licorice. I've thought of it. I'm going to check into some of these licorice companies. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, well, Mike and Dan are going to come over, and we're going to sit down and have a meal with you. What would be your outdoor go-to meal that you're going to serve to Mike and Dan that says, you guys got to try this? Hmm. And it can be fish, it can be venison, it can be anything, but what would it be? I probably probably just a good steak on yeah. the grill, you know. Yeah. And, uh, He's a master yeah. at mashed potatoes. Red, so Anigo, Wisconsin, is the home of the potato. I grew up in potato country, so we do a lot of stuff with potatoes. Yep. Michigan's got a lot of potatoes up by us. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, I think all McDonald's fries it, I heard came from a Michigan farm. I'll make the dessert countrywide. Did not know so, that. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. You can back check that. It's something I heard. Maybe they're just taking credit. I don't know, but it, it sounds good. Sure. Okay. You know, and we just got pointed out that actually you look like James Hatfield, the lead singer of Metallica. I do? No. Blade does. <laughs> oh, Blade does. Oh. Uh, it's funny. Before, I, I never used to wear a beard. Everybody always said I look like Dan Aykroyd when he's heavy and when I'm heavy. <laughs> Okay, so we, we, we just finished off a great meal. Uh, gotta love steak, won't lie. Uh, so we, we're going to sit around the fire, or if you're Sarah, you're just sitting in the garage having a few sodas. Uh, <laughs> sodas. Right. So yeah. Barley pops. Barley pops. So, right. Uh, right. Red Solo cups. Um, what, so, what story are you going to tell us that you say, you know what, guys, this story resonates within us that says you got to hear it? Mm. Well, there's a lot of them. It depends on what stage of the night we're at on that one. <laughs> uh, right. And, and some of them are so long and get elaborate. And that's like about us or? It, 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 it could be about you or it could be something that happened, you know. All right. That I'll tell you one real Something quick. we can tell on the um, show. <laughs> That's that. Something, Something that we can tell on the yeah, show. No, no, it's all so good. Uh, so, um, um, my buddy and I were fishing on a lake uh, uh, up actually uh, right on the UP border, um, at UP in Wisconsin. And um, I found out that my house down in southern Wisconsin caught fire and burned. Oh, no. And um, when I got back, um, kind of a do it yourself, so I started working on the house. And a buddy of mine and I, uh, we went and took lunch at a bar downtown in the West, Bull Front Kenny, you might have heard of him. Yeah. And uh, I ran into her while I was getting lunch, and she was with some other gals, I think probably on a Friday or something, kind of getting out early and heading out. And we shot a game of pool, and uh, she says, well, we're going out to such and such later, stop by. And, and I don't think she expected me to show up, but I did. And then, I don't know, that's that. that so... Needless to say, when we say the whole thing with the fire before the, the bar, everybody says, was she a fire? Fire? I'm like, no, I was a bartender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <that's pretty. laughs> there you go. So you thank the, yeah. thank the fire for being able to meet her. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's right. I've been Talk through a house that. fire, so I understand that, man. That's, that's, that's bad. Um, matter of fact, it's uh, 10 years ago, this coming October, so... 2013 was a bad year for me. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it's amazing when you look back on, on stories like that, that you, when people say things happen for a reason. Yeah. It kind of plays right into it, right? So It was probably five years down the road that our daughter... Yeah, so our daughter confided. Here's another part of the story. Yeah. So the <laughs> fire department... Uh, yeah, it's okay, because it's a bygone. Right. Like, oh, that's a lot of years, or 18 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I think the statutes of limitations are up <laughs> So anyway, uh, we weren't there, but our kids were actually. This started in the afternoon when they noticed it, thankfully. Uh, but we burnt wood all our lives, and um, and the, the fire department determined that the chimney cap failed and then broke down, and it started the pile of wood outside on fire. And about five years after that, when our kids are adults and uh, we're sitting around at Christmas, Brooke says, "Hey, Dad, you know the fire that happened." I said, yeah. She says, you know when you get a log stuck in the top and it's too big and you can't get it in there? Said, yeah, yeah. She says, well, I did that, and it got caught on fire, and I couldn't get it in there, and I got it out, and I threw it out the door, 
and caught that wood pile on fire and started the house. <laughs> so, actually, we will thank our daughter uh, for uh, us meeting. There you go. <laughs> See, um, that's what happens for a reason. You know, the only reason I, I, like, I, like when the, I like when the truth comes out years later. Well, as we become <laughs> adults, you know, or, or our kids become adults, and you're sitting around holiday or whatever, all of a sudden these stories start coming out, and you're like, yep. You know, they're not as innocent as what we once thought they were. <laughs> well, she actually, I think she played it pretty cool. She says, if the firefighter thinks that's how it started, then that's probably how it started. Yeah. yeah. Who am I to question that? Right, exactly. And uh, Denise, my, my, my fiancé, says, I like these people, potatoes and music. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Denise, well, we like your too. wife. That's right. <laughs> yep, uh, I'm... Within three weeks of getting married, so. Oh, congratulations! congratulations. Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. He's being taken off the market. Yep. Wow! Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and, and you know, but it has been, you know, watching what you guys have done, hearing Adam talk about your your store and going up there, and when Adam came on staff and and becoming more of all about blades, and like I, like we said, we when he was on the show. Uh, we would have your website up and we would be checking it out and then finally to meet you finally uh, with this show coming up in November uh, congratulations on, on, on taking this full year uh, becoming you know instead of just being the hard water season taking it into a full year where you're into the uh, soft water as well congratulations yeah, Thank we're you. Excited. we can't wait to hear the story in November when we come up there to hear how the season went how successful you guys were. Yeah. That, that's what we're looking forward to. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Other than that, I think we're okay. How are we doing on time? Oh, uh, we're right at it. All right, I think we're good. I don't see any new questions. All right. Oh uh, well, okay. I'll, I'll ask the question. Uh, one last question. Might as well want to know because Mark Coleman ain't gonna ain't gonna let it go, go, right? So the question was, uh, where is it? Ah. So your your kayaks that you have, do you sell booster seats for your kayaks? Because like myself, which is short stature, would probably need one. Mark Coleman sells. <laughs> so these kayaks have adjustable seats in them. So for short yeah. and tall. So there you go, Mark Coleman. Done deal. For those taller or shorter anglers in your lives. There you go, Mark Coleman. Take there that. So you, you can be boosted up a little bit so you can see into the water. Right? Exactly. There you go. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all coming on the show tonight. And like I said, we can't wait to get up there and see you in November and uh, get to know y'all a little better and have some fun. Absolutely. And one last one last comment is because if you are a bartender, you can make some wild mixes. What, what, what would I make? No, no, no. You, I, the, the comment was is you probably could make some wild mixes being a bartender. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. There yep. you go. And New Glarus, Wisconsin, so we had Spotted Cow down there and everything already readily available, but old fashions. Oh, you're going the old-fashioned route. Old-fashioned. Okay. But, yeah, I mix a drink. All right, so there you have it. So we'll, we'll see you guys in November. Absolutely, if not before. Guys. All right. And don't forget, yeah. folks. Thanks for the time. And don't forget, folks, if you got a moment, if you're on Facebook, go over to Blades Bait and Tackle. Uh, give them a like. Give them a share. Or if you're thinking about going up there, whether it be in the summer or the winter, get on there, contact them, or make a stop over at bladesbaits.com. You can check out their website. It's going to be updated here shortly. Uh, it, it's definitely not two dogs walking on the ice right now. They might no. be a little swift. There you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, hang on. After we wrap up the show, we'll chat briefly. But uh, so next week, what are we looking at? Oh, we're going to have Denise on the show. Talking more about her experience over in Africa. Yep. Her uh, first time hunter, first time in Africa, first time getting her aspect of that whole scenario. Week. Awesome. Looking forward to that. So. Remember, next week, 7.30, and next Wednesday night, we'll be right here, and we'll be talking about her view of being over in Africa on that trip with Danny. Uh, for those of you who are listening over uh, on, off of iTunes, if you listen to the podcast, make sure you give us a review over there. If you would, please, that helps people who support us. 
And uh, if watching the show here, do us a favor. If you could, please just share the show. Go over to the Up North Journal uh, Facebook page and smash that like button as well. Give us a like, follow, share on any of our social media pages. Do the same for Blades as well, Blades Bait and Tackle, on their social media sites as well. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back again next Wednesday night, 730. Y'all take care, and if you're out in the outdoors, be safe. Have a good night. <laughs>